All right, and now for the last section of chapter eight. I know it's been an up and down set chapter. Some easy things, some more difficult things. Um, if you made it through five and six without going bald, you're doing good. Good job. Um, here we're going to factor by grouping. You're going to notice that things have more than three terms. Okay. If that's the case, none of these previous methods work, so we have to factor by grouping. Okay, so we're going to look at these values and we're going to determine what do things have in common. So sometimes it's set up the right way, so we're going to factor those ones and find the GCF of those. So the GCF of these, 3n squared, so that leaves us with n minus 4. GCF of these is positive 2, so that leaves us with n minus 4. That's the whole point. We want to try and get the same value. We've already done this, so we have n minus 4, and then we put these things together inside their own parentheses. And there's your answer. It's been factored. The only thing you need to do is make sure that this can't go any further. Maybe this is a perfect square binomial, like section 7. You might have to go a little bit further. Okay. So the process that we're going through is separating these things in order to break them down portions into portions. Now the question is, is how would you break these up? Maybe you want to put the 14t squared and the 35 together. Maybe you want to do the 8t cubed and the 14t squared. Um, you're going to have different methods to do it, but you should eventually, depending on how, much other, how many other steps you need to take, get to the correct answer, no matter what. Okay? So why don't you give that one a try? to see. Let's try that. Okay. All right. So now we're looking at this one and we're going to group it together. Uh, first off, we notice that everything has something in common. So we're going to pull a 4q out of everything. So we get q cubed, q, q cubed. That's not that easy to say. Plus 2q q squared. I'm not so good with my q's. Plus 3q minus 6. Okay. So I'm going to leave the 4q out front. I'm going to group these two together. Pull out a like term. So I can pull out a q squared. Leaving us with q minus 2. Okay. I'm going to pull out a 3. Leaving us with a q minus 2. Okay. So I've got the colored portions. Okay, so now I'm going to leave 4q. This time I'm going to put these two together. Q, Q, Q squared plus 3. And I'm going to bring these parts together and get Q minus 2. Okay, so the final answer is 4q times Q squared plus 3 because that can't be factored any further times Q minus 2. Okay. Looks kind of ugly there with all those parentheses, but you got to try and keep control of things. I'm not going to use your little legal demon box for these all that much, so I would suggest that you write this down. Some of you are lazy. Let's just be honest about it. You just don't want to write it down. Well, you get it wrong, I have no sympathy for you. Sorry. Sounds kind of harsh. Okay, give that one a try. Follow the same method that you see right up there. You're good to go. Okay, you see something? 19 is a prime, so we don't have a number that we can factor out, but we can pull this out. We can pull an x. Okay. Can we factor this? Okay, so yeah, we want to try and factor this. So uh, these two numbers are 1 and 6, 2 and 3. This is 1 and 15, 3 and 5. Well, 1 and 15 is not going to work. Okay. So that would be 18 and 5 is 23. That would be 30. So that one's not going to work. So it's got to be this combination. Okay. So I'm going to go 2x and 3x. I want to get 19. So I have a 5 and a 3. 
but with a five here, a three here, that gets me 19. So this one is actually in your book. It's talking about what are the dimensions. So the possible dimensions would be x, 2x plus 3, and 3x plus 5. Okay. I'm going to leave the next word problem for you. Rectangular prism has a volume. What expressions can represent the dimensions of the prism? Okay. Remember, you take length times width times height to find the volume of a rectangular prism. So we want to try and factor that out completely to where we are as far factored out as possible. Okay. And then this last slide is just kind of a summary of everything that we just kind of did. The first thing you look for is a greatest common factor. If it's not there, skip the step. If the polynomial has two or three terms, look for a difference of two squares, a perfect square trinomial, or a binomial, a pair of binomial factors. That's what we did in section 5 and 6. Okay. 7 is the perfect squares or the difference of two squares. Okay. Part Step number 3, if the polynomial has four or more terms, group terms and factor to find common binomial factors. And number 4, as a final check, this is important, make sure there are no common factors other than one. Okay. So what that means, and I'll show you a real quick example. I'm just going to show you what. Let's say we factored something, and what we ended up was with this. Okay. You notice that these two have a 2 that can still be pulled out. Okay. That's what that means. It means that every factor inside the parentheses should be 1. If it's anything other than that, it still can be factored further. Okay thus completes your journey through chapter 8.